To explain, a custom night is a type of game where you have a short experience, and you, as the player, get to customize the difficulty of that experience. And usually, you know, you get more rewards for the more difficult settings you put it on, but I think a large part of the fun in these games comes from pushing yourself to really see how hard of a night you can beat and, you know, really training yourself to learn the game mechanics to beat even more difficult challenges. Anyway, a large aspect of these games are the characters, which are how you make the experience more difficult, but more specifically character themes. And I think about games based on character themes a lot. And while Ultimate Background Marvel Character Knight or the customizable Automaton Fight Reborn might seem like a great idea in your head, ideas like this quickly begin to fall apart whenever you consider them a bit. And this is because, well, A, it's difficult to make one of these games. You need a lot of skills or a few very skilled people to really make it come to life. But B, because it's hard to pinpoint exactly what makes a custom night good and how to really perfect the aspects of your game to optimize the experience of the player. So today I'm going to ask what are the fundamentals of a good custom night and if I can theorycraft the perfect custom night based on those factors. So to answer this question, we need to take a small detour and really nail down exactly what makes a custom night in general. And I talked a bit about it earlier, but to get a more specific insight, I went to the source material, the FNAF games, more specifically Ultimate Custom Night. And if you really strip it down to its most bare components. Ultimate Custom Night's fundamentals are simplistic. You interact with the menu screen where you can change various characters' difficulties on a numeric scale. Each one acts in a fairly simple way where most stay on a single camera system and the player does something to stop that character from giving them a short jump scare with poor quality. The player can also change between four different offices they get as rewards for points as a little extra customizable bonus. They sound complex when I lay them out like this, but these ideas really lay down the groundwork for a competent custom night. So great, that's what a custom night is. But let's answer the question, what separates the good from the bad? What makes a good custom night? Well, I have a confession. I haven't played a ton of custom nights. Don't get me wrong, I've played the best ones, the most popular ones. I thought I might be able to get a better answer from somebody who's really played a lot of these, so I went to the absolute king of custom nights. Somebody who has mastered both the good and the bad. I went to Frogger25. Now in case you don't know who he is, let me catch up to speed. Frogger25 is, and I quote, stupid good at stupid games. Basically, on his channel, he beats the all max mode to these types of games for fun. It kind of blows my mind whenever I see him doing all this stuff because just the sheer insanity that results from these types of games is kind of mind boggling. So if you're interested in some of that insanity that results from the hardest difficulty of these games, I'd recommend you check him out. So I asked Frogger our question, what makes a good custom night? And he gave me a very lovely and very thorough response. And from it, I derived two aspects of a good custom night, at least from Frogger's perspective, that we can use as fundamentals for our theoretical perfect custom night. And one of these is manageable RNG. And to explain that a little bit, I'd like to introduce you to Frank. Frank is our fake random animatronic that needlessly kills you. Not really how acronyms work, but I thought it sounded nice. Anyways, in our fake game, you have to survive until a certain amount of time. And Frank has four positions he can be in before he reaches a button. If Frank reaches the button, you lose. Frank will randomly move between these positions, meaning that he'll move from one position to another at a random time. This is an example of pure RNG or randomness. So no matter how good or bad you are, you still might lose sometimes if Frank reaches the button. And there's really nothing you can control about it if you're better, and this isn't good. Manageable RNG, on the other hand, is exactly what it sounds like. Random events that still occur, 
but if you're good at the game, you can control them. So let's say theoretically in our fake game, you had a Frank Sprite and you could spray that to make Frank go back to the beginning. Now, this is an example of manageable RNG. Frank still moves at random intervals, but now you as the player can control it if you're better at the game. That is an incredibly simple example and you never see anything that blatant in an actual game, but I think it gets the point across. Anyway, another one of the factors that Frogger talked about was something called mechanical balancing. In a game like this, you usually have multiple characters, all with different mechanics that can make your game more difficult in different ways. Mechanical balancing is optimally where every mechanic is diverse and balanced. So basically, they're all unique, and none are more difficult than any others. They're all creative and different. While these general categories don't really tackle some other things Frogger talked about, like responsive gameplay and trial and error, I think it's better to derive these aspects from it, as opposed to generally overcomplicating things. So great, we have two aspects of a good custom night. But this surely isn't all of them. See, the problem that we've had answering this question so far is that we've only really tackled the strategic gameplay side of these custom nights, which is a big part of it, but it's not the full story. So to fix this, I talked to another person, someone who has a bit more experience in really nailing down the developer and creative aspects of a game like this. I talked to Circus Rama or Juni, who is, I'd say the creative director of Ultra Custom Night. And she's introduced a lot of the creative aspects of Ultra Custom Night. So, just like I did with Frogger, I went to her and I asked her our question. What makes a good custom night? And she gave me an even more thorough response than Frogger did. But to sum up, her main point was about the custom part of a custom night. And her priorities were on the diversity of options the player has access to. And I think that's a very important part of it. Stuff like the office skins in Ultimate Custom Night, or the condemnium of character music skins in Ultra, are definitely a big factor in that extra customizability that kind of personalizes the game. And yeah, customizability is definitely a big part of what makes these custom nights special and unique. But another thing that she said that I kind of want to elaborate on is the universal consistency of a game. And that sounds a bit complicated, so let's go back to Frank. Now, in our simple game, Frank had four stages and he could move them. Basically, universal consistency is imagining that this takes place in a real world. So if Frank were to actually just teleport to his next stage instead of rolling there like you saw him do earlier, that would be worse because it kind of breaks the illusion that you're actually there. Universal consistency is kind of important and in games like Ultimate Custom Night, a big part of that is a character that walks through the location to your door is better than one that just appears out of thin air. So universal consistency is definitely a bit complicated, but overall I think you should get the idea. And so, with these two aspects of mine, I've added two categories to our amazing custom night criteria. One of them is the customizability, which I talked about, and the other is consistency, which mainly reflects on the universal reality of how the game is made. And so, great, we've covered the gameplay side of it and the developer side of it. And that's all fine and dandy, but I personally felt like something was missing. Something that separated more lackluster custom nights from the ones that get a lot of attention. And that is presentation. Some games just look better than others. And I feel like that's a big defining factor of what separates a good custom night from a bad custom night. And don't get me wrong, sometimes it fits the style of game someone makes, but it's hard to really hide a game that just looks bad. So I shouldn't really need to elaborate on this one a lot. Basically, full-on renders of 3D models are going to be better than Microsoft Paint drawings and PNGs off of Google. It's a simple criteria, but overall I think it is kind of important to have when talking about what makes a good custom night. And I think that just about does it. With all of these criteria laid out, 
we can determine that the perfect custom knight has manageable RNG, fun and unique mechanics, a vast array of customizability, the ability for the player to comprehend the gameplay in a realistic way, and overall good auditory and visual presentation. Are these the only things that you would need to make a good custom knight? No. You might need a few more than what I've just laid out here to make a good game. And you can certainly make a great game without these factors, which is what we'll get into in the next part. The next part of this video, we'll be covering custom knights that have already been made and judging them based on the criteria that we determined here. To really figure out what custom knights are the best compared to the ones that could be better. And I think it was important that we figured out the criteria in which we should judge it on here, as opposed to just slapping on a few harsh judgments which could be misinterpreted. And in that next part, you'll find your Animator's Hells and Maniac Manias. But to conclude this one, I think it was interesting finding out the ingredients in this perfect custom soup. And if you think my opinions or decisions were absolutely terrible, please. Type an angry message in the comments in all capital letters. I will only care if your comment is completely capitalized. Anyway, that's about my cue, and I'll see you in the next part.